So why am I showing a photo of USS Kidd? Because the picture helps make an important point. A one-foot diameter hole 20 feet below a ship's waterline will admit more than 16,000 gallons of water into the hull in only one minute. That's 67 tons of water in just 60 seconds, which equals the kid's 2,050-ton full-load displacement in only 31 minutes. So what's done to keep any ship from sinking due to minor hull damage? In a word, compartments. Instead of having a hull that is one large box, it's subdivided into hundreds of smaller ones that reduce and isolate flooding whenever there's a hull breach. Compartments are also a primary defense against torpedoes, as can be seen in the video, Battleship Texas, Coal and Torpedoes. Empty voids combine with fuel oil tanks to dissipate and absorb the immense shock of an underwater explosion. Without such layers of protection, critical machinery in the ship's buoyancy would be quickly overwhelmed. I'm currently standing in the port passage of the second deck and exactly 500 feet from the bow. What we're about to do is to take a little walk along this passage and I'm going to point out uh, things that are unique to this deck that have to do with the compartmenting on the ship. From there we'll go down to the third deck and then even lower to show you how things dramatically change. One more thing. Compartments are a necessary pain in the rear. While they can save a ship from sinking, they also seriously affect the movement of crew and materials. Even the means of getting to them must be protected. So you're going to see that their use on Texas only begins on the third deck. While that deck is slightly above the waterline, it's certainly subject to flooding if the ship settles. Compartments are extensively used on lower decks once we get below the waterline. Starting on second deck, you'll see that no effort has been made to protect against flooding since it's well above the waterline and any possibility of flooding. While deck hatches are gasketed, it's mainly to keep water coming in during heavy seas from pouring into lower levels. Now one thing to understand about second deck is that we're well above the design waterline or actually any waterline level of the ship uh, before it could sink. And so for that reason, we don't really need much in the way of water tightness. And this sh definitely shows both with uh, hatches. Here's a very large deck hatch that uh, is, does not really offer much in the way of water tightness. Uh, it's primarily an armored hatch. And then as we pan around, we can also see that the areas are actually quite large. Now we do have a, a watertight hatch uh, over here and there that uh, lead into compartments that are particularly sensitive to, uh, to flooding and water intrusion, so they have been uh, capable of being buttoned up. Now as we walk forward, again we'll see that uh, the spaces are pretty wide open. Here's a berthing space over here, and then here's uh, actually a uh, barbette number four. I'm sorry, this is barbette three, and you can see cross uh, athwart ships or crosswise passages that lead over to the starboard passage. Continuing to walk forward, uh, other little things that we can see is yet another uh, smaller armored deck hatch here that really offers no watertight integrity whatsoever. Again, it's just not needed. Very large and open spaces. Uh, here we have the, uh, the ship's laundry here. Of course, it's hard to see through this expanded mesh. And as we walk forward, we continue to see large open spaces, uh, more crew space, yet another uh, deck hatch. And there's really no effort whatsoever to, uh, to compartmentalize or divide this uh, space up into smaller areas. So this is a good general indication of how things are uh, on the second deck. Again, there's just no need to, uh, to provide uh, compartmenting to uh, make sections watertight. Things dramatically change on third deck since it's only slightly above the waterline. This was perhaps the most important deck on the entire ship since all lower decks required access from here. For that reason, third deck was the home of damage control crews because it allowed them to move quickly along the length of the ship to reach any problem area. It is also where practically all of the operators for every fuel tank and steam line is located and quickly reached by engineering crew. All right, I've now taken a ladder down to third deck level and things have suddenly changed quite a bit. 
We still have some fairly large open areas. Here's a crew birthing space here. And through beyond this bulkhead, a very, very large uh, space. Its uh, number is D109. It was primarily it was also a crew birthing space. But notice one thing. First of all, there's a bulkhead here. And you'll see that the door is uh, at least two feet off the deck. And there is a, uh, a watertight door here. It's called quick acting because with just a fast spin of this handle, you could dog that shut and make it fully watertight. As we walk forward, turn around and walk forward, roughly 40 feet ahead is yet another door exactly like that. And what this accomplishes is it subdivides the entire sections of the third deck and isolates them so that if you do have flooding, uh, you can keep it within this section. Well, why is it suddenly so necessary? Well, at this point, standing on third deck, we're actually only about a foot above the design waterline. So if the ships uh, suffered significant flooding, uh, the waterline would rise on the ship, and these areas would certainly be subject to flooding. Now again, these areas are pretty wide open, but again, they're subdivided. As I walk forward, you'll see yet another bulkhead off in the distance there. And again, that breaks this, uh, this portion of the ship up into, uh, into a smaller, more controllable area. Now here's something else. You can see here that we have armored deck hatches. And while they've largely deteriorated, there were watertight gaskets on those. And they don't look that much uh, different from what we saw on the deck on the, on the uh, second deck. But there are other hatches like this one, where you can see there's a raised combing that comes up to about my knee level. Now, why is it that they have some hatches protected by combings, but not others? Well, for all practical purposes, those that have combings like that um, uh, actually gave, provided access down below to areas that would be manned by crew when the ship was in action. And so, the idea was if the ship is in trouble, if it is sinking, uh, they could open this hatch and this gave an extra t a couple of feet uh, that protected the, the lower compartments from flooding. It would hold basically hold back the flood waters. This allowed crew to get in and out um, without uh, water pouring down into them. The other hatches that do not have the combings, they, um, they were uh, gave access to areas that typically would not ever be crewed and so they would remain shut whenever the ship was in condition one which is battle condition and we can see that there are other hatches exactly like this down in those there might be some equipment and piping that normally did not need access and there would also be storage for parts supplies and that kind of thing now, you'll have to pardon the mess here. There's quite a bit of work going on on board the ship in preparation for her going to dry dock. Now, we go ahead, and there's yet another subdivision, a bulkhead, and then also here's another large hatch. In this case, the combing pr protects that hatch uh, from... Uh, areas down below that primarily are a number of uh, five inch and three inch gun magazines. And then ahead we again have the, uh, this is called the ammunition passage and this entire passage runs along the, the tops of the boiler rooms. But you can see it again is subdivided not only here, but then well ahead off, way off in the distance there's another one. So this is how, at the third deck level, this is how the ship is divided up. Compartmenting gets serious on first platform. We see red tanks and yellow voids that store fuel and provide protection. However, there are some really big spaces like engine and boiler rooms that must be large due to the equipment they contain. For that reason, each contains a large, high-capacity, steam-driven bilge pump to help control flooding that may occur. Others, like the 14-inch handling rooms and magazines, are large due to the need for access, but these can be quickly closed off if flooded. We've now descended the ladder 
uh, down to what's called the first platform. And this is where things change radically. We're standing in a, in a somewhat limited to Thorpe ships or crosswise passage. And in this case, it opens up into the handling room for turret number two. This is a fairly large space for, uh, for uh, the lower levels with the exception of engine rooms or boiler rooms, which were considerably larger. But here again, you can see even these are subdivided. We have a watertight door here that leads into a powder handling uh, room. And then as we walk forward, we have another set of uh, watertight hatches that lead into handling room for turret one. Now, frankly, those would have been closed whenever the ship was in action to provide some type of flash protection if there should be a powder fire either in a handling room or the powder magazine. There are other uh, rooms uh, farther ahead. Here's another small passage athwart ships. And what this does is it provides access from above where they could uh, drop uh, lower uh, replacement shells to be taken into the magazines. We also have some mechanical equipment in here. But uh, more, most importantly is this provides access down deeper into the ship and it's down in here that we have uh, uh, at the bottom there, which is the whole deck level, is where we got access to the emergency diesel generator room that's in the forward part of the ship. So you can see that things are divided up pretty tightly here. Uh, again, watertight hatches. Uh, these would remain shut since there's nothing that needed to be accessed uh, when in battle condition. And so the ship buttoned up pretty tightly. Now one other thing to comment on is that there is extensive uh, ventilating ducts throughout the ship. And uh, if you took heavy damage that, that uh, meant f uh, compartment flooding, those air ducts, ventilation ducts, could act as basically as huge water pipes that could pipe water in. So with the exception of a very few that provided absolutely critical ventilation, those would be closed off and sealed so the ventilation was reduced, if not completely eliminated, to reduce the threat of flooding through them. Now we're going to take one more step down and we're going to go down into uh, the second platform level. Second platform compartments are mainly served by small passages that allow access to no more than three or four compartments that are individually sealed when under condition one or combat conditions. Some spaces may contain some critical functions like the electrical generators and ammunition magazines that are somewhat difficult to reach. Fortunately, the movement of ammunition was made easy due to powered hoist originally installed to serve the 21 5 inch guns in 1914 and later modified to handle 3 inch, 40 millimeter, and 20 millimeter cannon. We're now in one of the uh, 3 inch uh, magazines on the second platform. And typically, uh, second platform is where most of the uh, ammunition was stored that was smaller than 14 inch. Uh, again, we have an Athor uh, ship's uh, passage here. We also had several watertight doors. Here's the dogs for one here that is open. There's yet another one uh, that closes off this magazine is full of three inch uh, 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 shell tanks. But you can see that the rooms now are much smaller. You, don't, you do not uh, have large rooms here because again, if you should experience flooding, we want these sealed off to where not more than a few thousand gallons can fill a, a room and not extend into larger areas. The deck hatches here go down into the whole deck level and almost without exception, all of those would be dogged and none would be left open for access, nor would they ever need to be unless a damage control team had to open it up to, to drop a pump in and pump the water out. Like second platform, the whole deck is made up of small spaces that are only accessed through protected trunks or deck hatches from small passages and compartments that lie directly above. With only a couple of exceptions, none of these were ever left open or manned when the ship was in condition one. When we visit it, we can see how difficult it is to gain access. For that reason, compartments were only used for storing spare parts and provisions, meaning that it was a continual struggle for crew to get things like heavy parts or even cases of canned peaches from them on a daily basis. 
This is zooming starting from trunk A4 at the whole deck level. I'm in the uh, trunk or the passage on uh, hold deck level uh, that accesses A20S and A25MS. I'm standing at the port end of it looking starboard. Uh, here is a compartment that I don't know the number. This is A20S. and a 25 ms i am entering a 18 s old deck level looking forward as i walk forward i will pan toward port and then aft I am now entering A20S provisions on whole deck level, looking forward. As you can see, the deck is sloped to follow the curve of the inner hull. As I pan to starboard, you can see considerable fuel piping, valves, numerous valves. And then, looking aft, uh, the, the door is at frame 41. We finally come to the space in the double bottom that lies between the inner and outer hulls. It contains protective voids and oil and water tanks. There's never any reason to get into them other than for occasional servicing, so the only means of access is through a manhole. So as you can see, while using hundreds of small compartments below the ship's waterline created problems with access, they were the key to ship's survival when the hull was penetrated. Like the use of armor, it was a major means of protection, but as said in the armor video, the two together were inadequate. It also took the work of well-trained damage control teams to control flooding and other damage that would otherwise doom a ship.